This lesson deals with a positive clamp circuit. You can find these notes in the ECE302 ebook in chapter 2, starting on page 63. Positive clamp circuit, or sometimes called a DC restoring circuit, takes a waveform that's repetitive and changes its average value. I did this derivation symbolically, but let me put some numbers in to make it a little bit easier to understand. Suppose that V sub A were 5 volts, and V sub B is equal to 6 volts. In other words, minus V sub B is minus 6. The results we're going to get are the same for any waveform that's repetitive, whether it's a square wave, a sine wave, or a heartbeat, as long as it repeats itself. The circuit to do this consists of a capacitor, a real diode, a reference, and then a source with some source resistance. Let's replace the non-ideal diode with an ideal diode and a battery, and I'll put the battery on the anode side so I can combine these two batteries into one, whose value then would be V sub R minus VD on. Now suppose that this reference voltage is 3 volts. This condition up here of V sub R minus VD on, if VD on is around 0.7, would be 2.3, and V sub A is 5. This derivation depends on this inequality being true. Suppose that we start the problem at 0 and that this capacitor is initially uncharged. What's going to happen? The voltage V sub S is just 5 volts. The voltage here is 2.3. And the voltage here is initially zero. For this diode to conduct, this side of the diode needs to be higher in potential than this one. Let's find what the voltages are. So obviously this node voltage here is 2.3. But what is this node voltage here? Well, if current flows, we're going to get a drop across this resistor in this direction. So this node voltage is zero, plus the drop across here, plus 5 volts. No matter what this drop is, this is going to be bigger than this. The voltage across here is going to be positive. The current would want to flow in this direction if this were a resistor. So the diode's off. The rise in voltage is V out, the drop is zero, and then if we have no current flowing, we'd have zero times R sub S plus five. Our output voltage is equal to five volts. Let's write that down. Nothing new is going to happen until the input changes state, and that's going to be at time T1. At T equals T1 plus, the input voltage changes from plus 5 volts, say, to minus 6 volts. Now show it as a positive voltage in this direction. This is still 2.3. And for the diode to be off, this has to be at a greater potential than this. But this node voltage is the sum back to here, and we have at least one negative number. I'm going to guess that this diode is a short circuit. Let's calculate the current in the resistor by finding the voltage across it and divide by the resistance. This is a short circuit. This node voltage is equal to minus 0 plus 2.3. This node voltage is equal to minus 6. 2.3 minus a minus 6 is 8.3. T1 plus, I have 8.3 volts across here. And the current that's going to flow would be that divided by R sub S. I've got a spike of current. Voltage across this capacitor is going to change rapidly between 0 volts and some other value. We have a time constant, so it's not instantaneous, but it can be very fast because this is usually a pretty small resistor. You can figure out the steady state value of the capacitor voltage. So I've got 6 volts here, 2.3 volts here. And you can think of the capacitor in steady state as an open circuit, but in reality, it's just a big resistance. It's never really truly an open circuit, so I'm going to put a big resistor here. What's the voltage across here? Well, it's this node voltage minus this node voltage. But again, this is a short circuit. This node voltage is 2.3. And if this is a big resistor, the current is very, very small. This node voltage is roughly 0 minus 6. The voltage is 2.3, and then we would have minus a minus 6, which would be 8.3 volts. Voltage across the capacitor is going to go from 0 volts to 8.3 volts quickly. What's the output voltage equal to? Well, we're sitting at the transition point of the diode because we have very small current flowing. This node voltage here is just simply the voltage across this battery. In other words, the rise in voltage would equal the drop across here, which would be 0, plus 2.3. Started out at 5 volts. We now dropped to 2.3 volts. And nothing new happens until we get to T2. T equals T2 plus. The input goes from minus 6 volts to plus 5 volts. The voltage across the capacitor was 8.3 volts before T2. Just after it, it still is. This is still 2.3 volts. And now let's figure out this node voltage 
For the diode to be off, this node voltage has to be at a higher potential than this. This node voltage is 8.3 plus the drop across the resistor plus 5. This voltage here is at least 13.3 volts. This node voltage is 2.3. Voltage across the diode is positive this way, which means it's off and nothing happens. The output voltage, rise in voltage equals the drops around the loop would be equal to 8.3 plus 5 going to 13.3 volts. This was 5, and this was 2.3. And nothing new happens until we get to time T3. At time T3, we go back to minus 6. The voltage here was 8.3 volts. Can't change instantaneously, so we'll just leave it at that. And this is 2.3. And now let's see what happens. This node voltage is 2.3. This node voltage is equal to 8.3 plus this drop minus 6. This node voltage is equal to 2.3 plus the drop across this resistor. If current is flowing, then this node voltage would be greater than 2.3. The diode must not be conducting and the drop across here must be zero. What we're sitting at is the transition point of the diode where we've got no voltage and no current. What's the output voltage? The output voltage is equal to rise in voltage. Drop across here is zero and then 2.3. We're back to 2.3 again. Nothing new happens until we get to T4. T equals T4 plus, our input goes back to plus 5 volts. The voltage across the capacitor was 8.3. Before this, it must still be that value. Can't jump instantaneously. Our reference voltage minus one diode drop was 2.3. And for this diode to be off, the cathode needs to be at a higher potential than the anode, but the cathode is at 8.3 plus the drop across the resistor of current flows plus 5. So that's 13.3 volts plus this drop. But that's at a much bigger potential than this, so there is no current flowing and the voltage across here is zero. So the diode's off. What's our output voltage? Let's go around the loop again. Rise in voltage is equal to the drop of 8.3 plus 0 plus 5, so that's 13.3. We're back to where we were one of our previous cycles. Let's take a look at our results. We started out at 5 volts. We dropped to 2.3. We went up to 13.3. And then back down to 2.3 and so on. There was a transient response and then we're repeating ourselves now and call that steady state. Now numerically this was 5 plus 6 or 11. And the difference of these two is 13.3 minus 2.3, which is 11. We could also predict the peak to peak symbolically. For the input, we're going from V sub A to minus V sub B. So the peak to peak would be V sub A minus a minus V sub B or V sub A plus V sub B. The output's going between this value and this value. So we take the upper value, and subtract the lower value, the V sub bars cancel we have minus VD on, minus a minus VD on. That would cancel, we get V sub A plus V sub B. Where's the circuit to? Well, in steady state, it takes the bottom of the waveform, and what we say, it clamps it to the voltage V sub R minus VD on. The word clamp comes from woodworking, where you would take a piece of wood and use a C-clamp and, and clamp it to a workbench and then work on it. What's preserved here is the peak-to-peak -peak value. Whatever the average value is here, we've changed it. If this was the same max as it is min, the average value would be zero. And of course here it would not be zero. So it's called a DC restoring circuit and that we restore a DC value to the waveform. I would again prefer you not memorize these formulas because you can simply remember this idea where you take a repetitive waveform, you take the bottom of it and you shift it to V sub R minus VD on and you keep the peak to peak value. I did do this for a square wave, but it would work for any repetitive waveform. Our previous derivation of the positive clamp assumed that V sub R minus VD on was less than V sub A. Suppose the opposite's true. Suppose maybe you have 7 volts and VD on is, say, 0.7, and this is, say, 5 volts still. Now this is bigger than this. What happens? Well, you've got to repeat the derivation we did on pages 63 to 66. And let me just give you the results and ask to see if maybe you'd like to do the derivation and see if you get all the steps in between. It's pretty much the same types of steps, but I'll let you take a look at that on your own. Let me just tell you the answer. What's different here is the transient response. 
instead of starting out at V sub A, we start out at V sub R minus V D on, stay there, and then go up to V sub A plus V sub B plus V sub R minus V D on. If you subtract this point minus this point, you get V sub A plus V sub B minus V sub R minus or minus V D on. These cancel and just get the V sub A plus V sub B. So the peak to peak of the original waveform is also the peak to peak in the steady state waveform. And we can say the same thing, that a positive clamp, whether we have the inequality one way or the other, is it takes the bottom of the waveform and it clamps it or puts it to the reference voltage minus one diode drop. I would prefer that you remember the circuit this way instead of memorizing these formulas, because you can reason these out. You're simply gonna take this waveform and lift it up and put this point at V sub R minus V D on. You will get the same type of response no matter what the waveform is as long as it's repetitive. And this is a positive clamp circuit.